scrub it, it's one. Hello and welcome to Incognitio TV. This is episode two of Cheap Love, a show where we explore relationships, the depth of compatibility within certain decisions that we make, particularly within the realm of StarCraft II and its economy. In order to set the tone and, and possibly to give us the opportunity to learn some things from experts in the field, we will be taking some inspiration from Leah's Seduction One. You can find that on Amazon Kindle. I found it for free. I believe that it still is. If you'd like to support a, a budding artist, please go on over there and download and you can follow along with Leah's story as we explore economic relationships within StarCraft. So without any further hesitation, let's just get the mood set and let's then talk about what we're going to be exploring today. He handed her the packet which she took in her shaking hand. I see you are attending the symposium. Just those few words rocked her soul. The timber of his voice and his confident tone affected her in a way she didn't recognize. Yes, she managed to utter. You too? He nodded. Are you okay? Leah nodded, though she wasn't entirely sure what state she was in. The heartthrob held out his hand again, I'm Gianni Rinaldi. Before we learn more about what Leah is up to and who this mysterious sexy man happens to be, let's talk a little bit about last week's show, Cheap Love Episode 1. We were doing some experiments with building barracks on a one base economy seeing how many marines that we could get out by the 10 minute mark. Our maximum productive capability there ended up being, I believe, 58 marines. It was like six or seven barracks and 22 SCVs mining minerals. 22 SCVs was actually a bit of an error on my part, but we were trying to do an experiment, so I kept that consistent throughout the, the next few iterations. What we found was that we could also add in some marauders, which makes that army a lot more diverse, uh, able to handle some other kinds of units better. Marines and marauders play really well together. They have a very deep bond. Although they're so deeply bonded, there is an element missing there, and that's the medevac. But that little menage a trois of units uh, has a long history, and we, we can talk about that in a future episode of Cheap Love. Today, what I'd like to do is see how making the decision to sacrifice 400 minerals for the sake of a second base is going to affect our ability to produce units at this, again, this 10 minute mark. It's an arbitrary time in the game, and this is an experiment to see how economic decisions affect our outcomes and to see the relationship between spending our money in this way and spending it in a different way. And eventually this is going to become more and more complex, right? My show is largely geared to players like myself, players who are lower than gold league in the ladder. So I'm trying to introduce a way of thinking that ends up being very complex but starting at very simple things and simple fun experiments that you can do yourself to explore the depth of the game's economic mechanics. So without getting too side railed on off track on why I'm doing this or you know the the thoughts behind it I, I want to get in and I want to do some of these experiments so this time 
what we're going to do is um, take an expansion at 17 supply so that we have two base economy and we're going to prioritize getting full saturation on those two bases and then our next priority is building as many marines as is possible okay and then at 10 minutes we're going to see how many marines we have and then we're going to do some experiments with that same format and see if there's anything that we can do to increase our productive capability so that we can have more marines at the 10 minute mark obviously I'm referring to reactors and that means mining some gas just a little bit maybe we might have to rerun that experiment a few times to find the optimal n number of SCVs mining gas to to be able to have as many reactors as possible we're gonna go through some different scenarios and see which things actually result in more productivity and which do not so let's go ahead and get into the game I'm gonna put my headphones on and I'm also gonna get my window layout cleaned up here because I cannot see chat again there we go now I can see the beautiful chat window something's happening on my phone looking to see what that is okay here we go loading up StarCraft 2 again we're exploring economic relationships in this episode of cheap love and particularly a concept called opportunity cost and time preference right now if you're not familiar with what those terms mean opportunity cost is the idea that uh, let's say I have some monies say I've got a hundred dollars real life scenario here I've got a hundred dollars I could buy a hundred dollar camera and be able to produce videos right now or let's say that I'm gonna have another hundred dollars in a month so if I wait two months I've got two hundred dollars okay so that is actually a better illustration of time preference okay I could have a twice as good camera if I wait two months coming back to opportunity cost which is what I was or what I was going to explain is that I could spend that hundred dollars on a camera or I could spend that hundred dollars on lighting or a backdrop each of those things are things that are good and things that are gonna help me be productive as a streamer but which is the thing that I need the most, right? So when you're in a situation where you can use your resources in different ways, then you have to have some other piece of information, some other variable, something that's going to direct you toward the most effective use of those resources right now. And in StarCraft, this happens all the time. I can choose to aim for a strong mid-game, or I could choose to aim for a strong push of units right now and all of those decisions have consequences and all of them have uh, strengths right but where they have their strength is based on the information those variables getting that information and using it correctly right so if I have reason to build units now then I should build units now if I have reasons that I believe that I can wait on building units and I can build a stronger tech or I can upgrade or whatever the case might be I can expand so that I can do all of those things at the same time all of that should be informed by your scouting informed by how the understanding you have with the matchup so that's why we're doing these things is so that we can look at really basic uh, situations and see how simple decisions change the outcomes and also this is the sort of thing that you know on a very fundamental level is is what goes into creating a build um, it's just that you know this is the examples and the experience we're doing right now are very 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 simplified we're just doing barracks we're just doing Marines maybe Marauders a couple of bases seeing what the outcome is after after 10 minutes of play all right so I don't want a 2v2 map I want a 1v1 map well, let's get that loaded up and we'll just do Aqualon Waste because that's what I was using last week so let's keep it consistent 
And again, uh, so that I can reference last week's experiments, I'm going to aim for having 22 SCVs per base. Whether that's good or bad is kind of irrelevant. We're just doing comparative analysis. So we're just going to get in here with a very easy AI so that we don't have anything to interfere with our experimentation. And again, expansion at 17. Let's see how many Marines we can make. Just raw barracks, no add-ons, nothing like that, no mining gas. Let's just get a number. See where this takes us. Okay. Oh my, it's a random AI. Ah. I hope he tells me what race he is. That'd be nice. Mm-hmm. Alright, we're gonna have a second base, so let's get our camera going over there. Okay, again, all we're doing here is an experiment to see what kinds of impacts a different decision will make toward our ability to produce units. So last week we did one base with a, a bunch of barracks and we cranked out 58 marines at our maximum ability there by 10 minutes. And now we're going to add a second base into this at the 10 minute mark. So we're going to do a bunch of standard stuff and we're going to try not to make any supply mistakes so that our experiments are consistent and accurate and represent the sorts of results that, that we've been getting. Additional supply depots required. Mm hmm Alright, and we are going to sneak a barracks in right now. We're also going to get an orbital command at 15, so a lot of that should seem pretty standard. Standard. Let's get that out of the way, just in case it's interfering. Again, we're doing experiments with economic relationships in StarCraft, and we're doing very basic experiments to illustrate fundamental points and fundamental mechanics within a game of StarCraft particularly economic relationships, how deciding on how to spend your money is going to affect outcomes. Alright, there we go. We've got time for a Marine. What's going on? We're going to get down another yep. supply depot. And we're going to float our minerals and go build our expansion here in just a moment. Alright. Upgrade complete. Big job, There we go. Yes, Two sir. bases. Prioritize SCVs and then Marines. And in 10 minutes, we'll see how many we have. We've got enough for a second barracks, so that's what we're going to do. We also need some more supply depots. We don't want to be supply blocked while doing these kinds of experiments. That would be counterproductive. Again, we're seeing how many Marines we can push out on a two-base economy versus a one-base economy that we did last week. We've got enough for more barracks, so we're going to do it. Actually, I have enough for two. We're going to mule drop on cooldown. Get our orbital command and do a little SCV transfer. Better 
We've got enough for more barracks, so that's what we're going to do. We're keeping all of these naked for this experiment, meaning no add-ons. Prioritizing SCV production. We're going to drop our mule on our fresh expansion. All right, there we go. Make sure that we're utilizing all of our productive capability. Before we make the decision to add on more barracks. You want a piece of me, boy? Okay. We've got enough, so we're adding more. And we're a little supply blocked. By a little, I mean we are. I don't feel too badly about that since we were in a similar situation with our last experiment. Additional so it should still be fairly accurate in terms of a relative analysis. Or again, we're looking for 22 SCVs. That'll keep things samey. We've got enough for, again, more barracks. I'm going to go ahead and build a couple more supply depots. Crank out the Marines. We're doing a little experiment here, trying to see the difference between a one base and two base economy in terms of producing Marines by the 10 minute mark. And then we're going to do some variations on that. It's now eight minutes in, so we're getting pretty close. Additional supply depots required. A little bit supply block, but not too bad. They're finishing up. There we go. And we've got enough for another barracks, so we're going to add on. Make sure they're all grouped up. 8 minutes 30. Alright. We're a little bit over, over our target there with um, SCVs, but that's okay. Basically, at this point, we're going to direct all of our SCVs down here, keep that marine production going. We're at 9.15, and we're supply... Oop, I'm going to have to do a little call down here to make up for that. We're really close to the end mark of our experiment. Additional supply depots required. It'll be close. Additional supply depots required. Additional supply depots required. And we've got enough for more barracks, but now Additional we're running out of time. Required. Additional supply depots required. All right. This is interesting. Let's see. Let's see what what is going to be the result. There we are. All right. 55 Marines. Hmm. That actually seems like an interesting result. Now, there's going to be slight variation between one experiment and the other because I'm not a robot. If you're a robot, that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm also just, you know, mechanically not as tight as somebody who is a better player. But what we've seen here is that we basically have produced about the same number of Marines, even though we went for an early expansion. Uh, what is interesting here is that we have a lot more barracks. Okay, So let's think about that for a second. We have a lot more barracks, but about the same number of Marines. So given that you know, at some point, at some point within those 10 minutes, we had twice as much income compared to our one base experiment right twice as much income and it looks like we have at least 30 percent more barracks maybe 25 percent more barracks okay without like getting too much into the weeds hey, hey ryan hart band thanks for tuning in without getting too much into the weeds of this right we can see that there's a whole lot more resources in our capital structures our our barracks and Anytime you build a barracks, it's going to there's a, a time period that goes by before they reach their productive capacity. They have to build, and then the first marine has to come out, and all of those things add time. It pushes out 
into the future when you're going to feel the effects of that uh, new productive ability. Okay, so what's a way that we can increase our near-term productive output of these barracks? Well, we have an add-on called the reactor. The reactor will let us build two marines at the same time for less mineral cost, but with the added expense of Vespi and gas. And it also is going to increase, uh, you know, shorten, I should say, the amount of time that's going to go by before that barracks is um, at its maximum productive output, right? Yes, you have to build the add-on, and that's construction time, but once that is created, you're going to be producing two Marines at a time versus one. So you can put more of your resources into producing units now with less mineral cost in barracks in the short term. So I'm curious to see how that's going to how that's going to play out. Before we do that, let's uh, check back in with Leah. Uh, she apparently just met a man named Gianni Rinaldi, who thinks who she thinks is sexy as hell. Um, it's a little bit of an awkward situation because she's in hospital, or, well, technically her mother is in the hospital, but and she was there. She dropped a little packet describing a symposium she was attending. Um, and apparently uh, Gianni Rinaldi is also attending the symposium. Mm. So let's, uh, let's see what's going on there. Let's see what's going on there. Hmm. Shaking his hand was so much more than a mere greeting, and Leah wished she didn't have to let go. I'm Leah Ivers. The look he gave her undressed her on the spot, though any outsider wouldn't have noticed anything. It was as if he could see inside and perceive what she felt when she didn't even know. He was unlike any man she had met before, and Leah realized she was staring. It's not polite to stare, Leah. Jeez. Alright. So now that we're all hot and frothy, reading about some man, stranger, undressing some other stranger with his eyes, now we can focus on the hard economics of this. Oh, okay. Hmm, I think I need a glass of cold water. Okay. Let's do this again. Ready to do some work now. <laughs> yes, bare hands. I am talking about the book Leah's Seduction 1. How intuitive of you. Okay, my opponent is ready to go. We're doing economic experiments, very simple experiments. Last week we did one base economy in barracks and we looked at how many Marines we could produce. And then um, we added in some Marauders and we looked at how that affected our ability to, to make a certain number of units by the 10 minute mark. We just got done with a two base version and ran into some interesting things. We, we found out that we made about the same number of Marines, which at first glance doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense because you have twice as much income. How come I can't produce twice as many Marines? Um, <laughs> The bear hand says that Leah's Seduction actually has really good reviews on Amazon, and I know that's part of why I chose it. It was really well reviewed, and it was free, and I and I was like, "Wow, this this sounds amazing!" And I, I would like to promote this amazing thing as much as I possibly can. I read a little bit of it, and I was like, "Hmm, that gets me in the mood," if you know what I'm saying. I always like to read romantic fiction before doing economic analysis. It's like, you know, basic econ economics here, you know, keeps me interested to have some uh, hot and steamy literature in between. I don't know what that says about me. But now we're going to do a two base economy. We're going to add reactors to our barracks. 
and we're going to see if we can't get above 58 marines at the 10 minute mark. If not, we have something that we've learned. And then we can do some other stuff and experiment, see if our hypothesis is, is accurate or not. So let's go ahead and start this up. I'm going to undress my opponent with my eyes. Mm, very easy AI. You are so hot. That, that AI never even attacked me in that last game. Hmm. Okay, so again, we're doing a little experiment, a little thought experiment, and a little bit of economic Not relationships, how spending affects future outcomes and the kinds of decisions that you might be faced with in a game. This Not isn't going to look minerals. like a game at all, because we're just trying to see what happens when we do certain things. And in this case, we're going to be adding reactors to our barracks on a two-base economy. At 10 minutes, we're going to stop and see how many Marines that we've made. And whether or not that that was a good use of our resources, given our immediate task of making a bunch of Marines. Not enough minerals. What kind of video card did you get, bare hands? If you don't mind me asking, anyway. Additional supply depots required. Chat delay is awkward. <laughs> There's Not our first minerals. barracks coming down. There we go. Not enough minerals. We're gonna orbital command at 15. We're gonna build our second base at 17. Ooh, the 980. Hot! I'm currently rocking two AMD R9 290s, which is total overkill for StarCraft, by the way. And we're going to get our second barracks. There we go. And we're going to get our orbital command as soon as this barracks is finished up. The timing is pretty tight there. Very good. Get a marine going. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to get this supply depot now rather than later. I don't think that's going to affect our outcome too much. And I did it in the last experiment, so it should be representative. And we're going to float minerals until 17. Uh, and I'm just going to have one marine right okay. now so that, that I can do that. Alright. Over here. Not enough minerals. We need Not our second minerals. base. Not minerals. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Yep. There we go. Okay. Prioritize them SCBs. minerals. There we go. As soon as we can get through a round of production and have 150 minerals left over, we're going to add on another SCB barracks. Ready. And, oh my goodness, I completely biffed on this. Let's start it over because we need gas because we need reactors. So we're going to start over again. I'm glad I caught that before we were too deep in. My apologies, gentlemen and ladies. Boom, let's go. All right, so we're adding reactors in this experiment. We want to see the difference. So what that means is I'm going to get a refinery at 12 and a barracks at 12, and then we'll, we'll, be, we'll be on our way. And we're going to add on reactors as we can afford them on one geyser with three SCVs. Um, if we get to 10 minutes and we find, man, I really need more gas to support that many barracks having reactors, then we can do it again. That's the cool thing about experimentation is that you can try a thing, if you mess up you can try again, start over, redo the experiment. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, integrated graphics, uh, Ryan Hartband, that's, uh, that's rough stuff. Is that on a desktop or a laptop? Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. SCB ready. 
Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. All right, so if you're just tuning in, what we're doing is we're doing some experiments with economic relationships within StarCraft, very basic fundamental experiments. A good introduction to this way of thinking for players like myself in the bronze, silver, gold strata of StarCraft II. Go ahead. I can't build here. What we're trying to do is see what decisions we can make to increase the number of marines that we have available at 10 minutes. And this time, we're adding reactors into a two-base economy to Additional see if we can produce more marines than on a one-base economy. All right. First barracks going down. Refinery going down. Not enough minerals. Not and we're enough gonna minerals. take our orbital command at 15 and our expansion at 17. Hmm. SCV ready. I have a feeling that we're gonna we're gonna do better than the 55 that we produced in the last experiment. And now we have enough for a second barracks. We're going to take that. Yeah, we're and we're going to take our orbital Not command. Minerals. As Not soon as we have enough minerals. minerals. Not enough minerals. Bam, there it is. Fix our hotkey so we don't do anything weird there. We're also going to take our second supply depot right now. Update. Drop our mule. Get out our SCV. Float, float, float. This would probably be seamless if, if uh, we didn't take that second SCV barracks, but ready. that's outside the scope Not of our particular minerals. experiment. We're keeping Not things consistent minerals. from Not one to the next. Minerals. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. All right. Yeah, whatever. And once we have this down, we're going to start getting our reactors. There we go. And when we have 150 minerals, like now, going we're going to add another barracks. Ready. So you can see that we already have ready. less marines at this time, but, you know, the idea here is that we're deferring to the future. Add on complete. Add-on complete. And we need it's supply depot. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. SCV ready. Gangway coming through. Not enough minerals. We can see right now we don't Not have enough, enough economy minerals. to support that double marine production quite Not yet. Minerals. Not enough minerals. Once we get some Not double mule minerals. drops happening here, that should be less of an issue. We're also going to transfer some SCVs huh? down to this base. Alright. Get our reactors going Not enough minerals. as soon as possible. There we go. Dropping mules, keeping an eye on our supply. Not enough minerals. And you can, you already can notice that this is taking more keystrokes and more actions per minute to keep up with, because our rate of production is much higher, even though we have fewer barracks. All right, and it looks like I'm starting to float a bit, but. I also have another reactor coming up. See? See? Alright. We're pretty well stabilized here. 
We're doing an experiment to see what kinds of economic decisions we can make to increase our productive outputs within a certain time frame. That is the important bit of this analysis. And we're supply blocked, which actually occurred in the last analysis, so we're okay with that. We're going to go ahead and relieve some of that supply block there. We did that in the last game. All right. We're eight minutes in, and we've got 22 Marines. Hmm. All right. Getting close to our time. How are we doing on supply? We should probably get a couple more of these depots going. Okay. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. All right. Ooh, just barely. Barely supply blocked. Nine minutes, 22. All right, mule dropping, mule dropping. And we've got 22 over here, so we're going to rally everything down. Take two off. Base is under attack. Oh no, I'm under attack. And there we are. Hold on, let me unpause it real quick. 54. Hmm. So that's also really interesting. Again, Adding on the barrack, adding on the reactors to the barracks, didn't change our ability to produce uh, more marines by 10 minutes into the game. Technically, the highest number that we've gotten so far has been on one base, with barracks as we can afford them, just pumping out marines. Because there's costs associated with the expansion. There's, you know, the 400 minerals, or 8 marines, that go into creating the command center. There's the SCV costs in saturating the mineral line, right? Uh, and then you have, when you have this scenario where we have reactor barracks, we're producing more units at once. And so there's actually gonna be a little bit, just a little bit more of a supply depot cost because of the frequency, right? In terms of, in terms of time, right? So, that's really interesting. But check out what we didn't spend our money on this time. In this experiment, we spent less money on barracks. We have fewer barracks, about the same number of Marines. We also had to spend money putting SCVs into a gas geyser. Those SCVs otherwise could have been mining minerals, right? So it seems like the, at this 10 minute mark, we sort of have a hard cap of 58, 60 or so Marines that we're able to produce, regardless of the way that we structure our, our, our base, you know, whether it's naked barracks or reactor barracks, okay? Hmm. Now, if we extended this out, if we said, let's look at 15 minutes, let's rerun all these experiments at the 15 minute mark, then we're gonna see very different relationships. We're going to see totally different relationships. Now, if you go the other way in time, let's say you wanted to do a six-minute Marine push. Well, what's going to be the best way to get the most Marines at six minutes? Is that going to be raw barracks? Is it going to be reactor barracks? The shorter your time preference is, right, the less that you really do want to invest in things that are going to help down the road, right? So, if we look at our first experiment, I think that we can form a hypothesis. Our first experiment was one base, build barracks as you're able to, and we got out the most number of Marines yet. Okay? So, based on that, I think that we can say that if we're going for a six-minute Marine push, and that's all that we cared about, you know, not caring about 
going into the mid game, not caring about unit composition issues, not caring about having an economy to fall back on if things go poorly, it sounds like raw barracks is going to be the way to go. Hmm. And now that I'm all oh, worn out and brains pumping and fingers are pumping, I think I need to figure out what's going on with our good friend Leah. She was just uh, mentally undressed by a total stranger and apparently she's really into it. And then she was staring back, it got awkward. So let's see how that pans out though. She was sure she couldn't have been the first. In fact, with her hand in his, Leah stood, catching the first glimpse of his face on the way up. And I just read it from the top of the page because my mouse click didn't work. So she was sure she couldn't have been the first. In fact, even as they stood in the middle of the lobby, Leah noticed women discreetly glancing at him. Though their looks were obvious, with her legs a bit wobbly, she hugged the packet to her chest. See you inside then. Gianni said. When he turned and walked away, Leah couldn't help but gawk. Even in his dress clothes, his ass looked fine. It was tight and just round enough. While she could... <laughs> While she should have been following him to the conference room, she stood there, fantasizing about touching him. Oh, man, this is just really starting to pile on. Ah... Okay, so we've got 20 minutes, and we're doing economic experiments, really basic, fundamental examination of relationships between decisions that will affect your productive output, output within a certain time frame. So we found out that if we're trying to produce lots and lots of marines by the 10 minute mark for whatever reason, we've, we've found that really, from a pure output point of view, a one base economy seems to actually do better at meeting that goal. Hmm. We then decided to try a two base economy with raw barracks and then a two base economy with reactor barracks. There wasn't much difference between the two, just we had a different infrastructure in place Maybe at some point in the future, we could have seen some different results in our productive output, but at the 10 minute mark, with the goal of just having a bunch of Marines, it didn't really seem to help us any. And it added additional complexity, mining gas, uh, having a faster bursts of units coming out that affects your ability to manage your supply if you have a low APM. Okay. So, I started to suggest that maybe, based on that data, if I were trying to do a very, very all-in six-minute marine push for whatever reason, and not having any other concerns in mind, I thought that maybe, based on that data, that raw barracks, as I could afford them, is going to have the most marines available for a six-minute marine push. Let's find out. Let's now do six minute experiment. We're gonna do one base because we found that in that part of the game with this particular goal in mind, a second base isn't really doing anything for us. So let's try it. Let's base. get out of this Is previous one. And let's load it up and see what happens. Hmm. Tight and round. I guess that's the magic formula for an attractive backside. Uh, if I were to take Leah's reaction to heart, hmm. So I've noticed that the tighter it gets, the less round it tends to be. It, you know, I don't. You see what I'm saying there, right? Right. Okay. Six minutes. Marines, one base. Let's see how many we can make. 
prioritizing SEV production, marine production, and then barracks as we can afford them. We're going to stop at six minutes, see how many marines we have. Not and then we're going to see if we can do that same thing with reactors and what our result is going to be. Not this is a basic news. economic experiment. I find these Not really cool news. because it exposes me to the fundamental economic mechanics in this game, which otherwise can be quite complicated and daunting to try to sort of Great learn job. in the uh -oh. traditional fashion. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. So we're Not gonna do some minerals. standard looking things. We're gonna take an orbital command at fifteen. We're gonna take our barracks at twelve. And then we're gonna add barracks as we can afford them. And what that means is that we're gonna add barracks based on our ability to get through a round of production. That's SCVs and Marines, and if we have 150 minerals left over, we're going to build another barracks. Not enough minerals. Not enough minerals. Just round enough. <laughs> Love it, Ryan Hartman. Love it. So again, I got to remember to stop this experiment at six minutes in. And what? Barracks. That's what. We're gonna get our orbital command as soon as that first barracks is finished. There's gonna be a little delay. So I feel like I hit the SCV button. Uh, a little earlier than I normally do. If you're following along, I think you'll you'll know what I'm saying. We're doing queuing up two units at a time in each structure. What's going on? Yeah, that is pretty close to representing how a lot of folks in you know the uh, average to below average skill range play. And we're going to get our supply depot, drop our mule, we're going to stop at 22 SCVs because of earlier experiments, not because of any sort of, you know, optimal efficiency or anything like that. Additional supply depots required. And we're just trying to keep our experiments consistent. We've got enough for a fourth barracks, so we're going to take it. Not enough minerals. SCV ready. There we go. We're gonna build another supply depot. And we're at four minutes and forty. We've got another two minutes of production that we can do. And it sounds like we looks like we don't yet have enough for an additional barracks. Additional supply depots. We're at 15 or 17 SCVs actually, because some are off the line. Boop. And we do have enough for another barracks. There we go. Alright, 5 minutes 30. Our experiment is almost complete. Getting close. By the number. This better be good. All right, we've got enough for another barracks, but it doesn't matter because there we are. At six minutes, we have 16 Marines. Six minutes, 16 Marines, which is uh, at six minutes, depending on what you're up against, is actually quite a bit of quite a bit of power. So I'm using my banana pen to write down six minutes. Approximately 16 Marines, give or take a, a few moments of clicking efficiency, right? All right, so we're doing some exploration of relationships with 
between economic decisions and StarCraft at a very, very basic fundamental level. We're looking at um, the structure of capital. We're looking at time preferences and opportunity costs, right? We found the two-base economy uh, versus a one-base economy with the goal of a 10-minute marine push didn't really change a whole lot. Reactors versus no reactors didn't really change a whole lot. It just reduced the number of barracks we needed to build. Um, so now we're trying to see if, you know, a six-minute push has, has some things in there. And my theory was that we could do the best with a six-minute marine push on one base with raw barracks adding on barracks as we could afford them. We got 16 Marines. So, let's see, how can we mm, mix that up a little bit, try to reallocate our resources to try to increase our productive output? We could do the, we could do the reactor barracks, right? We could also try to do a, a second base. Okay. Um, my initial feeling here is that the second base economy, the, the, the time for it to actually start to impact your productive output, it is going to probably be a little bit too long to really make a difference in this sort of a push. Um, so let's try the reactor variation. We're going to get reactors as soon as we can. We're going to have one gas geyser with three SCVs in it. And let's see how many Marines we have at the six minute mark. Yes. Thank you for, for typing just round enough in chat, uh, <laughs> Ryan Hart fan, because I just, I just need to visualize round and type better. That's the problem. And every time I look over there and see that, I find that my uh, ability to visualize round and type is becoming better. Whether that's a good thing for me or not, I'm really not sure but it is what it is. Mm. Okay, we're doing some experiments. Let's see what we can do with a six minute uh, marine push. We're gonna add in reactors to see if we can get more than 16 marines by that 16 minute mark. And more marines, substantially more marines, like not one or two more, but let's see if we can get a percentage more marines to make a difference here. We're just exploring some really, really fundamental and feelings. basic economic relationships. Not We're setting the feelings. mood with some romantic literatures. Not the feelings. best that uh, the internet has to offer. Ready. To, we've been reading Leah's Seduction 1. I highly Not recommend that you feelings. pick it up and support all of SCB the arts. Ready. Got to be a little more precise with my mouse. That's the other thing I like about doing these experiments is that there's no like game pressure here, and I'm learning something about the economy of the game. But I can also work on you know basic mechanics like mouse control, and camera control, things like that. Okay, we're gonna get our barracks, and we're gonna get a refinery. Put the thing you want. Not enough minerals. All right. As soon as we can afford another barracks, we're going to take it. We're going to put three SCVs in that gas geyser. We're trying to see if reactor barracks help our cause with creating a six-minute marine push. Or if it comes out on the even with naked barracks. Our naked barracks experiment got us... 16 Marines at the six minute mark. We're getting our second barracks now. And we're gonna get reactors on these immediately. 
Insufficient Vespine gas. Oh, by immediately, I mean gas. not exactly immediately. See, look at that. I keep sneaking those SC. Whoop. We need our not orbital command. Minerals. There we go. Keep sneaking that SCV into my control group. It bothers me. Gets me hot and bothered. Kind of like this book. As soon as we can afford another barracks, we're going to take another barracks. So now. Upgrade complete. Add on complete. Okay. In the rear with the gear. That was an idle SCV. Here we go. We need another reactor. SCV ready. Uh, well, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm just going to move it because I think it's the position. But normally it gives you that little red thing. I'm not seeing the red thing. There we go. All right. And can we afford more barracks? Yes, we can. So we're going to do it. Not enough minerals. Going to drop our mules on cooldown. We're about five minutes in, and we've got barely any Marines. This is feeling like a bust. This is feeling like Naked Barracks is the way to go for a six-minute push. Complete. All right. Not enough minerals. Additional supply depots required. Oh no, that's a hell of a time to get supply blocked. Not enough minerals. Big job. Okay. Alright. There it is. Does that look like 16 Marines? No, nope, it doesn't. Let's see exactly how many it is. Alright. This better be good. That is 10 Marines. So we got six less by using those reactors. And this really illustrates that spending more money now to do a thing is about getting more out of the future. If you want more units now, most of the time it's going to be more efficient and you're going to have more productive capability just using the raw barracks. Okay? So if your time frames are short, you don't want to increase the time that you're 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 not producing things. The longer the amount of time that you have until you need to use those units, the more you can invest in creating your infrastructure. Right? That is the structure of capital. That's actually like the way capitalism works, right? Is you put a bunch of money into something now, hoping that it is uh, going to create profits in the future, right? If you just wanted immediate productive output, then you'd use cheaper solutions, the raw barracks, right? So keep that in mind when you're reacting to information in a game. If you see something happening in your game, and you're like, I need units now, OMG, I'm going to die if I don't have more units right now. Don't put a reactor on that barracks that you just built if you need units now. If you need them four minutes from now, six minutes from now, get that reactor, right? Because as time goes on, you're going to be putting out more units. This is the fundamentals of the economic relationships in a game like StarCraft. And I need to check on the time, because I would like to figure out what's happening with Leah in Leah's seduction one more time before we need to go. And it looks like I have just enough time to do that. Apparently, Leah was just fantasizing about touching him. The brief encounter required a trip to the ladies' room so she could catch her breath and regroup. Still trembling, Leah went inside a stall and leaned against the locked door. Something had just happened out there, and she was unable to get her wits around it. Of course he was sexy, too sexy. As if that were possible, 
But there was something in his look, something she saw in his eyes that she couldn't decipher. Yet it had shaken her to her core. Making an effort to breathe and calm down, Leah didn't move for several minutes. When she did, she made an effort to rearrange her long, honey blonde hair and dab at what little makeup she'd worn. Very little good it did. Leah still looked shaken. She'd find a place in the back of the meeting room so Gianni would be in front of her. That way he wouldn't see her, but she could watch him. Thank you for joining me on Incognito TV, episode two of Cheap Love. We've explored Liana and the possible relationship that she's maybe trying to pursue with Gianni in Leah's Seduction One. We've also talked about simple economic relationships within a game of StarCraft, talking about how to increase productive capability within different time frames, whether it's a short time frame or a long time frame. And I feel like we've really learned something today, particularly about roundness and tightness. But if you're just tuning in, you're going to have to watch the broadcast again to see what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. You guys have a good evening. I'll be streaming uh, again in a little while, sort of impromptu, making my push for gold. So if you want to hang out with me while I do that, uh, I'd love to have you join me. Thank you so much, and good afternoon. Yeah.